manager Jack Tin seems pretty confident that the cup is going south this year. I can only see how pleased we are to go to Wembley for the third time. And in my opinion, I have every confidence in our boys that will do the trick this time. In fact, I'm certain of it. Although Portsmouth will be making their third appearance in the final at Wembley, they have yet to prove victorious. Perhaps 1939 is to be the year when the club will register final success. It's certain at any rate that they'll play a terrific match. Pompey have no cat, but they have Jack Tin's famous spats. These are said to be extremely lucky. More people at Wembley than ever before. Pompey supporters are practically jubilant. As well they may, here go the famous Pompey Giants. Football is a wonderful game. The Queen is here too. To see Portsmouth in white shorts and the Wolves in the dark. And Guthrie wins the toss for Pompey. And from the kickoff, the experts must be holding their breath. For the boys from the naval port, who only a few weeks ago were fighting against relegation to the second division, are right on top. And mighty Scott, the Wolves goalie, is as busy as a flea at a party. No score for the first 31 minutes. Then Morgan of Portsmouth kicks a long ball down the field to Anderson. Anderson to Barlow, who left the Wolves only two months ago. And Barlow turns the tables on his old team. Put Portsmouth one up. Flags flying in the Navy. After that, you'd think the Wolves would fight back, but they don't seem to have the chance. As wave after wave of the Portsmouth attack surges round the Wolves' goal. One minute from half-time and another Portsmouth onslaught. The ball swings over from the right and runs loose to Anderson. Anderson puts it just wide of Scott's right hand and makes it two up at half-time. So the Navy splices the main brace. The second half opens with sensation. Anderson kicks off and within 30 seconds, Barlow drives for the Wolves' goal. Scott saves, but Parker rushes in to make it three for Pompey. goal brings the crowd to its toes for some of the finest football ever seen at Wembley in a cup final. Keep your eye on Scott with a number one on his back in the Wolves' goal or a series of saves with a touch of genius. But Scott can't hold off the mass attack forever and Pompey get yet another. They got to the final ten years ago and were beaten. All right, pal, we know how many beans make four. They got to the final five years ago and were beaten again. But the third time, well, you know the rest, as Guthrie comes up for the happiest moment of his life. We all know that the Navy is Britain's sure shield, but the sailors won't be on the water tonight. But the main focus was a chance to make real history and land a major trophy. A Wembley final was uncharted territory for Harry Redknapp and for most Pompey fans. 69 years had passed since the club's last FA Cup final. Championship side Cardiff under former Southampton boss Dave Jones had their own ambitions to take the cup out of England for only the second time. But Pompey were determined to make it a day and a season to remember. as Parry's doing Hill. Almost a hit there that might have had his shirt tucked as well, as James came out very, very quickly. Montari's ahead of it, this is Horaidasa. Now Montari, good ball in for Kanu, danger here, still Kanu, surely, no, off the post! What an opportunity there, some wonderful, wonderful footwork. And it deserved the goal, but he couldn't just stroke it home. Diara, he's got a wonderful control. Utaka now, maybe a chance to show that pace. Options in the middle with Kanu and Kratcha and Montari. Enkelman half saved him, and it's turned in. Kanu has got it this time. It was a fumble, I'm afraid, by the keeper. And Kanu, who missed an absolute sitter earlier on, 
has made a miss. Well, to be fair, it's been coming. Enkelman hasn't looked confident right from the start. Utaka out on that far side, just kept hold of the ball, kept trying to get a little bit of space to get round Capaldi there. Eventually there, he just creates half a yard for himself, drives it in. That's a poor parry from Enkelman. And, of course, Canu has seen all the game that he keeps parrying and blocking things. And that's another simple goal for him here at Wembley, exactly like he got in the semi-final. Campbell keeping a watchful eye on Johnson. James came, but didn't quite collect. And then it's Lubens! No, the whistle had already gone. That will not count. Dismay, despair for Cardiff. But I uh, clearly heard the whistle, even in this uh, incredible noise at Wembley today. <laughs> a lovely flick there by Crapchart. It could be in here. Canu! Oh! It just squirt wide that fire deflection. It should have been too, really, for Portsmouth. Use it now. And the crowd here, and forcing the save. He got his angles right that time, Peter Eckelman. Well, to be fair to Nugent, he got himself in that position there, he couldn't see anything else that was on, he thought, well, I'll have a pop. Barros right upfield here. But it's Pompey Joyms of Wembley Joy, 69 years on from their last FA Cup final. His famous old club have at last Another triumph to celebrate, and Harry Redknapp, in his first experience of a major occasion, is a Wembley winner. Kanu, man of the match, the only goal of the match. A glorious afternoon at Wembley capped the greatest season in most Portsmouth fans' memory. The Pompey Chimes rang out to acclaim the first trophy in nearly 60 years, and a place in Europe for the first time in the club's history. For Harry Redknapp, it was the sweetest moment of his long and illustrious career. His first major final, his first trophy. Many in the squad had tasted success before with other clubs, but even for the old stages like Campbell and James, this would be an achievement to savour. Pompey are back amongst the best in the land, and new legends were made at Wembley on the 17th of May 2008.